All right, so in this video, we're going to create a, some windows. So we're going to start by drawing some, some lines as our, as our markers for where we want our windows. So let's say the top of my windows, and I want to make sure that I'm parallel to, to there. So that is now parallel. And we'll come down to about there. So if I click to where the bottom is, it'll kind of remember that distance and it will therefore line up to show me if it's parallel with the green. So uh, we'll start with a window on this end. And we'll go down to the bottom. And we'll make it about that wide. Of course you can use actual measurements later on. All right, so my first window is going to fit inside here. So I'm going to use the offset tool. Um, and then I'm going to offset it again. Not quite as much. Let's go there. Um, and then we'll draw a line down the midpoint. And then I'm going to offset each one of these squares. Oopsies, I'm on the push pull, offset. Now your computer's going to remember the last measurement, so if I just double tap that edge, it will do the same offset distance. Um, now I can use the push pull feature to give it some, some definition. But first I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to use the eraser tool on some of these markings, some of these guides. Oops, wrong one. And we'll erase those inside lines as well. Oops. You don't have to do your window the same, but just to give you some ideas. All right, so now I'm going to use that push-pull feature, and I'm going to pull out this window frame a little bit. Just orbit a smidge. And I'm going to also maybe pull this guy out a little bit. And I could push these windows in a smidge. Again, if you want the same distance, just double tap the other ones. So there's one window that's kind of got a little bit of definition and, and legend to it. Now if we want to recreate that for another window, so let's say I draw my guides. I'll just zoom out just a smidge. Okay, and I want to make that the same distance, so I did this one for 11 and 5 eighths. So I want to put a marker at four eleven and five eighths. Oops. Did I do that wrong? Oh, because I wrote the sign on the wrong spot. Okay. So I want to go to Four feet, eleven inches, and five eighths. I should have made that at a much oops, better spot. All right, so let's take the ruler and see if that's right now. 
Okay, so let's use that pencil tool to draw in that along our guide point. Now I want to I want it to be the same. So when I use the offset tool this time, when I tap, I'm going to just go over to here and click on that endpoint so it's the same. And then I'm going to offset it again and then I'm going to go to that inner one. Oops. And use that one as a guide. Okay, we did the up and down arrows using the midpoint, so that will be straightforward enough. And in fact, to avoid erasing that up line, I'm just going to do it from the midpoint of the inner one. So from there to there, and there to there. And then again, we offset the inside. So when I offset the inside again, oopsies, control Z, I gotta click on that face first. So we're gonna offset that one, and I'm just gonna go to, we have to zoom in a bit. Oops. Should be registering, but we offset on this one. All right, well, uh, maybe because I it shouldn't have mattered that I pushed it in, it should still be reading that, but because it's not, I'm just going to redo it there and then double tap on the other ones. Oops. Okay, that is not doing what I want. Okay, I'm going to undo. Oops, I don't want to re. Let's redraw that line. Oh, I'm missing it. Okay. So I'm going to undo those because I just realized I need to do a second offset. All right, so let's try that again. So we're going to offset this one to match up with that one, inner piece, and now I can redraw those midpoint lines. And then we'll use the offset again. Oops, not on the whole thing though. Ah. Just want that face, so we're going to offset that one. And I want it to offset to the same as that one. And that's still not doing what I want. Should be reading that. All right, well, let's go there and see if we can't get it to follow. So select that one, offset it, just double tap so it gets the same. Offset, double tap. Okay, and then again, we want to use the eraser tool and just erase those crosshairs there. All right, now we're going to use the push-pull feature, and I'm going to take that outer edge and pull that out to the same as that one, and then I'm going to take that inner edge and pull that out to the same as that one. I'm going to take one of those inside edges, and I'm going to push it in the same as that distance and then I can double tap each of those. And now we've got essentially a second window 
with the same measurements. I don't think I measured it the same though, because that one looks wider. They're going to be set inset and offset the same, but I don't believe I measured that right. No, I did not. So when I made this one, I measured it differently. But regardless, that's how you can make a, a window fairly quickly to duplicate it, um, having uh, the same offsets. Now, oops. If you want to make this see-through, you need to add the texture. So what we're going to want to do is click on one of those window panes, and we'll go up to um, the, I want to go to Paint Bucket Tool. And then I'm going to click on, oops, sorry, getting an email junk. Um, I'm going to click on this brick, which will give me different ones. So we've got wood, window covering, glass, mirrors. So you get different textures there. I'm just going to go to glass and mirrors. And let's choose, uh, I don't know, let's see what that one opaque it. Oh, so see through 48%. Let's just apply that and see what happens. So if I orbit around, oh, because I made it double pane, we can't see through that. Hmm. So let's see what happens if I delete that. Maybe I didn't need to offset that. That might have been a better idea. And then you can actually see through into your rooms. OK, so note to self, don't need to offset our initial design. I guess I don't need to offset the rims either, so let's redo this. So once you've gone ahead and added your textures to your windows and glass, you can add other textures as well, should you want to paint the walls or add wood-like flooring. Um, I've got all these guide markers, so I don't want to go and click on each one individually. I can go to, um, if that isn't going to delete all those guides, then what I'm going to do is just use the pencil tool, or the eraser tool, and then I can just click and go all the way around them all at once and delete them that way. It doesn't take that much longer. And then I can choose the paint bucket tool and decide if I want to use um, what I want. So for example, Let's say on the walls, I want to do a color. I can choose various paint colors um, for my walls. Me personally, I've got gray on my walls, so I might choose a gray. Um, on my floors, I could go to I like hardwood floors, maybe a darker one. I could choose to do that. Um, perhaps my walls might be different colors, in fact, so I might go back to um, colors. And maybe on another wall I have a brighter color. About a green. So you can design your material colors as well to give it more character, even on the window frames itself. Um, I might want a nice brown for that one. So I can go into the wheel and choose my color as well. So if I click on like an orangey, go into a darker brown, and choose to paint all those window sills. In fact, I could probably, because it's not getting all of those edging, let's see what happens if I select all of it and then go with the paint bucket tool. Whoops. Okay, well it did all of the trim, which is probably faster 
And now then if I just go back and do um, the windows again. I don't want window coverings, I want the glass here. And I don't want to select off of having all of that though. And then, so that way it was a little bit faster. See here I've got all those edges, so I think what might be a, a better option is to just zoom out for a second. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's use that hand tool. And select that whole window. And let's go back into my colors. And I can use the eyedropper tool. This is a good chance to use the eyedropper tool to figure out what that color was. So now I can go apply it to everything. Okay, I'm going to click off of having that whole window selected and I just want that face now. And then select my glass again. Oops, so now all of that window trim, including where it was offset, is going to be colored. So that you can do to add in your your textures. And as you start building your various other components, whether it's couches, TVs, tables, that sort of thing, you can add your textures that way. And then perhaps on the outside of the wall you might want something else. So if we did... Um, Let's see about some siding. And let's go there. Can't say I like too many of these. Work maybe. No. Looks more like something to have on the ground. Oh, maybe that one. Anyways, so you can start building uh, with your textures to get make it look nicer. And that's it.